Would you like to live your best life possible regardless of your imperfections? Discover cutting-edge tools and inspiration to let go of your limitations and expand your life beyond what you've ever imagined. On Imperfect Brilliance, we help you tap into your unique gifts and talents, uncovering and letting your brilliance shine. Join certified facilitator and coach Betsy McLaughlin as she delves into different areas of your life to get unstuck and create the life that is truly possible for you. Betsy has changed her life by utilizing the tools and techniques she is sharing with you. What if your willingness to acknowledge your brilliance is the catalyst to creating a new reality? When you stop judging you, what else can you create in your life and in the world? Join Betsy live every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern to create magical and joyous possibilities for an hour of laughs, questions, tips, and more. We are excited to contribute and play with you. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Imperfect Brilliance. I'm Betsy McLaughlin, your host for this time together. And I'm really looking forward to our conversation today day and I wonder you know there's so much that our society defines as ideal and as we're growing up we learn so much about like what we're supposed to do what we're supposed to be good at what what is like the being the good kid or all, all of those things that we, we learn as we're growing up and they're projected at us or the people actually say these things to us, our teachers say them to us, our parents, our grandparents, and it can cause confusion for a lot of us. And so our conversation today is about being a young leader, and we're going to find out what that is and how it came out, um, how it came about. And I'm really just so looking forward to this and talking about what if our, the difference that we be is actually our brilliance. And what if the way we, each one of us individually is different is a gift to everyone around us and including the earth in that. And what, so what we're going to dive into and explore today is like, what does that really mean? What is, what is being the brilliance of you? And so my guest today is Enzo and he is part of a group that calls themselves young leaders and they are young leaders and entrepreneurs that are really looking to create a new, a different world, a new world, and one that is, they lead with consciousness and with joy and excitement and empower people of all ages, even though they call themselves young leaders, they certainly are not going to exclude any age group. (laughs) And in in this movement really of what else could we create and what if we don't ignore any age group and what if we actually look to what people who may be in younger bodies what do they actually know and giving giving them platforms and opportunities to share with us their unique perspectives and what do they know? So that is a long-winded invitation, you know, and welcome for Enzo. So thank you so much for joining me today and tell people, um, uh, you know, where you live and how the young leaders came about. Awesome. Thank you so much, Betsy. Thank you so much, everyone listening to us. Um, my name is Denzo. I'm from Brazil, actually. Like I, I live in a countryside city in the state of São Paulo, the capital city that most people know. Brazil, like about Brazil from it. So, mm-hmm. I'm a medicine student. I'm in the middle of my course, and actually, when I in the beginning of this year, I was really looking for something different, 
And so I was in like Facebook and I saw this group of young people that created with the tools of access, which I, I had already known a little bit about, but it was so exciting to see people my age creating with it. So I sent them a message like, can I join? And it was in mm -hmm. such like an embryonic phase. It was such in the beginning. And I sent them a message like, would you guys, like, do you want any contribution? Could I join you? And they so like open-hearted welcomed me, you know? It was such a cool space to create with these people that are, that are more or less my age. So our, our ages are from 16 to 25. Ideally, there are people that are a little older. But as you said brilliantly, Betsy, um, it's not about age. It's much more about the perspective that each one of us is in the world. Mm -hmm. And so Young Leaders was created by a group of, uh, by three Mexican members that were Ferris, Cesar, and Milagros. And they, with Silvia Puentes, which is another certified facilitator from Access, they created this group as like a whisper of the universe of what can young people create in the world, you know? And then a lot of people from different countries started coming together, including me. <laughs> so I, I entered the group, I think, in April, and it was just brilliant to be part of this, and it still is, and to see how can we change the world just by the space of the difference of us, which is the theme we are diving today. So I think that's more or less how Young Leaders came to be. <laughs> And so you have young leaders from around the world who are all joining in. Is that correct? Yeah, that's it. So we have members from, initially we had just members from South America. So Mexico, Argentina, Ecuador, and Brazil, me and other member. And then we, we kind of grew to Turkey, to Slovakia, to Italy. And now I think we are just not in Africa and like... Um, Australia yet, but who knows? <laughs> Let's see what the future, uh, what is in the future for us. That's awesome. And yeah. how, so you've got this movement of really having kids, younger, younger people, where, where do you kind of start the conversation with kids or young, you know, young leaders, young adults, and older people as well, where are you starting these conversations for them to get the, the possibilities that you all are being? Mm -hmm. So do you mean like where in terms of platforms that we are in or like all things that we can bring? Okay, <laughs> cool, cool. So um, in terms of social media, we are on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube. We have a lot of places that you can truly contact us and engage mm -hmm. with us. So we have a lot of content on the internet. And to engage with like younger people and older people, um, it's, it's easy for us because it's about inclusion. It's not about like aiming to to speak to a, a specific group of ages, you know? So young leaders, one, one thing that I say a lot, it's that it's not about age. It's not about your age. Being a young leader, it's not about how old are you. It's about what perspective do you want to bring to the world, you know? What uh -huh. perspective of living you want to create here? So when we, so we are in all of those social medias, um, you can find us on Instagram on at underline young leaders. And there you have our link tree with all our links to YouTube, Facebook, to engage with us in our WhatsApp thread. So there, there's a lot of possibilities here. If you know anyone who's young or if you yourself want to engage with younger people, if you have ideas for us that you want us to talk about, we would love to hear from you. Because what we create is mostly based on feedback that people give in, in terms of what themes do people want to know from young people? You know what I mean? Because most of the times we hear topics from older people and mm -hmm. to have 
to have younger people talking about some topics can be really like welcoming for people my age. So that's the space we're we're targeting to be in the world, you know. I love it. And it it really is a you know, it, it is a different perspective and what does that invite the younger kids to like having that different perspective? Mm -hmm. So I think we being in this space of allowance and of consciousness, even being young, I think we kind of, we can kind of inspire younger kids to pursue mm -hmm. what they desire as their lives. Because for me personally, this is what I've been asking and creating and choosing, like to have more of my sense of living and my sense of being. So I think that we as a group can be an inspiration to younger kids and to younger generations for them to have a different perspective in the world truly so they can choose something different. Because until now we just had like from the older generations, people that were choosing based on this reality and on the solidity of this reality. And to have younger people that are a little older than you that you can look up to in the sense of, oh, there's something different here. Like what would create if I chose to outcreate them? So like speaking for myself, what I desire the most with young leaders is to be a space of inspiration that people can truly outcreate and create more, you know, so we can have a different world, a different way of living truly on planet Earth. That's, I love that so much. And so if somebody's listening and, you know, you said like the solidity of this reality and could you expand a little bit more on what, what you're saying there and how mm -hmm. you guys are looking at changing that? Sure. Yeah, because like this reality, which means like the way that people live and that we were entrained and taught to be since we are kids is to conclude and judge and separate as a way of creating, which is like like asking for you, Betsy, and for everyone listening, does this actually work? Like the way that we have been living for years and years, has it actually been working? <laughs> because like speaking for myself, I can, I can say that the way I was entrained to live and to function in this world didn't work for me actually, you know? So when I discovered the tools from Access Consciousness and Young Leaders, it was such a different way and a different possibility that I could choose to function from. And so this reality is based on making you be like everybody else. I think that's uh, a good way to put it. So whenever you start to be the difference of you and when you start to choose based on your reality or what is true for you, what truly works for you, you are like something beyond this reality. And that's kind of what we mean when we say this reality and like beyond this reality in Access Consciousness. So when we go beyond it, we truly have infinite choice. Because if we are functioned from what we were, were entrained to do in this reality, we are limited in the sense of possibility that we have, you know? So when we are growing, we have like the way we need to eat, the way we need to dress, the way we need to behave, the way we need to engage with people. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, um, some of those areas don't really work, work for us. So when you start to use these tools, you can really perceive what works for you individually and uniquely, which is truly the gift of the difference you are and that we are, you know? That is so beautifully said. Thank you so much. And that, you know, you said it so succinctly. And that's one of the things that I love about the different conversations that I have had with some of the people who are involved with the young leaders is that there's this, there's this sense of, of pragmatic enthusiasm and joy and everything that just permeates in all of the conversations. And I would love for you to, to talk a little bit um, before we go to the break and then maybe even after, of how how has 
finding the the things that you've talked about so far, how has finding that changed you and your life? Wow, that's a good one. Um, it changed like basically all the bases, the foundation of my reality, because I thought I was like something and using those tools and using questions and truly looking at what I truly am in terms of energy and in terms of the space that I truly am. Wow, it changed like 180 degrees, you know, like I started access in the past September, so 2019, September. And mm -hmm. since since that point, so much has changed. Like right now I'm on university, like I said, and the way I function with the university was totally different. And it wasn't actually fun for me. Actually, I thought about quitting university. And when I discovered those tools, I started asking myself, okay, like, what, the, what truly works for me? What do I truly want to learn here? How do I want to learn? And so when I started to ask these things, everything changed and shifted. And apart from that, my relationships, like with my parents, changed dynamically because I was so at the effect of them and their choices and like the kind of stupid choices they were making. And when I started being in allowance of them and of me and of my choices, I truly had the chance of choosing based on what really works for me. So that was one of the biggest gifts that I received from the tools of access. And the sense of communion and of integration that I have now, I think it's also one of the biggest gifts because I always had that sense that I was here to do something with the planet, with the people, and to really change the reality here. But since I was little, I thought like, no, I'm, I'm small, I won't be able to change anything, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, and with the tools of access and with all the guys from Young Leaders, I really could see how we are grand and how we can change things just by being ourselves, you know? So... Yeah, and it, it's not about doing anything. It's just about being who we truly are and being that space of joy, of happiness, which most of us, especially in my age, like I'm 20, and people my age and teenagers, like stereotypically, have this sense of, I need to be angry, I need to fight everybody, I need to rebel myself. <laughs> and so we are here kind of present a different possibility that we can actually be caring, we can be loving, we can be a different space, teenagers or not teenagers, we can truly be who we are. And mm. for me, it didn't ever make sense like being angry and being that stereotypical teenager. So when I found those yeah. tools, it was like, it was like having a breath, you know? So I was like, <laughs> oh my God, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> so everything changed, like in like summing all up, everything changed. My relationships, my reality with money, which I didn't have any um, financial awareness, and I started to having it um, thanks to the tools of access, my relationships, my reality with the university, my body changed dynamically. Like I, I had some allergies and some things with my body and they all disappeared. And now I'm, I, I'm having a really good time with my body that I didn't have before. So everything basically is changing like every area of my life. Yeah, and it's been just, just one year and it looks like, like 5,000 years. It's crazy, truly. Isn't that amazing? How, how awesome. What a beautiful answer. And I know that we do need to take our first break here. But stay tuned for way more delicious conversation with Enzo today, Young Leader. Thanks for listening. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Connect at ohmtimes.com. 
own times, creating a more conscious lifestyle. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. Are you looking to change anything in your life, to have an even greater appreciation of everything around you? Would you enjoy having a life of more joy and greater abundance? and explore what is possible for you? My name is Betsy McLaughlin, and I invite you to explore simple and pragmatic tools that I share on my radio show, Imperfect Brilliance. I know firsthand that you can change anything. We explore tools and questions with amazing guests, offering all kinds of conversations on living your best life. I invite you to listen in Tuesdays at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern to Imperfect Brilliance. Consider a coaching call with me and let's explore what you would like your life to be like. Visit my website at www.creatingyumminess.com and you're invited to call in to Imperfect Brilliance with your questions Tuesdays at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. I look forward to connecting. A social distancing tip. Putting distance between yourself and others is critical to slowing the spread of coronavirus. So here are ways to stay in contact without the physical contact part. Call, send a text, set up a video conference, post on social media, dedicate a song on the radio. If you have symptoms of fever, dry cough, and shortness of breath, call your health care provider before going to their office. For more info, visit coronavirus.gov. Let's all do our part because we're all hashtag alone together. Brought to you by the Ad Council. so much for listening to Imperfect Brilliance. We are here today with Enzo, and we're talking about young leaders. And right before the break, you told us that you have really changed a lot of how you've been living just since September of 2019. And I would love for you to without going into tons of detail, because obviously we don't have that kind of time, but telling people maybe some of the, the highlights, a couple of the highlights of things you mentioned tools. And, you know, so if people listening are not familiar with acts of consciousness, I would love even for you to explain it in your words and then maybe what a couple of the things that have really impacted you have been. Okay, cool. That's awesome. So, like, from what I perceive, tools and access are anything that can contribute to the life and living you're creating. So pretty much everything can be a tool and everything can be a weapon. <laughs> That's something I like to joke about because everything you can use to contribute or to destroy your living and life. And the tools of access, they have been such a gift in my life. All of them, um, but I'll, I'll just highlight some, some of them, like you said. Um, mm-hmm. I think the, the first one that's popping is choosing in each 10 seconds. So like we say in Access, choosing on 10 second increments. So when you choose every 10 seconds, you, can't, you cannot have first a boring life. <laughs> so when I started choosing every 10 seconds, my life became so much more dynamic than it had ever been. And it was so much fun just to be present with everything because this is the space that this will take you to. And so I started really, like, if you choose to be sad on, like, 10 seconds, the, the next 10 seconds you can choose happiness, you know? And this is something that I understood. Um, I, I didn't firstly understood, but I got it with time and with using this tool. So if I'm doing drama, the next 10 seconds I'm going like, okay, 
would I, would I truly want to choose that? And I can choose something different. And that's the brilliance of being who we are, that we can choose every second and we can be dynamically changing, you know? So mm-hmm. this, one, this is one of my favorites. And the other one is one that I ask myself every day and pretty much every hour, every moment of every day, which is like, who am I today and what grand and glorious adventures will I have today? And this is one that I ask like every time, basically like, who am I being now? Like, who do I desire to be now? Because we as energy are always shifting and changing. And if we choose who we desire to be in the moment, we can choose anything, you know? So when we mix those two, those two tools, uh, the 10 second one and this, who do I desire to be here? You can basically solve anything and change anything because if someone, if, if a situation requires you to be more intense, you can deliver this intensity energy and in the next 10 seconds, you can be the most kind and caring person. And, you know, you have this 10 second choice as something that can truly lead you to the place of not needing to stick yourself to any energy or to anything or anybody. So if you choose to have a problem for 10 seconds, that's okay. The next 10 seconds you can choose to be like a problem-free person. (laughs) So I think those two are quite awesome. The next one is one of the tools that we hear from the basic courses to the most advanced ones, which is interesting point of view. <laughs> it's I, I think it's my favorite and interesting being interesting point of view. It's being in allowance. So it's being in that place where nobody needs to be wrong. Nobody needs to be right. Everybody can be who truly is and everything can be how it truly is without you needing to control it, without you needing to do anything about it, you know? So interesting point of view is such a cool tool to use in those like pandemic times and in holiday times that we have like coming up in December now. So (laughs) if a relative of yours have a point of view that you don't agree and that it's a little bit like stupid and you know it, you can use like, for an example, if I'm your relative and I say something that's really not contributive, let's say that way. You can uh-huh. go, okay, interesting point of view that that person has this point of view, has this point of view. Interesting point of view that this person has this point of view. And you can repeat it until it has no charge at all. And this has been one of the tools that I use the most, especially with family, with friends, and pretty much with engaging with everybody. And also with my own thoughts and feelings and emotions that I thought were mine. And That when you get present with all these things, for an example, if you have um, thoughts about self-sabotage or that are not contributing to your living, you can go, oh, interesting point of view that I have this point of view. Interesting point of view that, that I have this point of view that I'm ugly. Interesting point of view that I have this point of view that I'm fat. And you can use it with everything. And it's one of the most dynamic tools from Exis in my perspective. So... Yeah, I think this one and one of the tools that I would love to share with you guys too, it's one that I was talking to a a friend today about it, which is like when you're in that space and that place of putting yourself in a hole and not finding a way out and like not making sense about anything, you can ask, okay, if I was looking myself in this scenario from the eyes of consciousness, what would I see? Because when you go to that place, you don't have judgment and you can truly see like the bigger picture, you know, because sometimes we stick ourselves with significance and making like small things significant and turning it into a storm. And so if you ask this question, you truly have the chance of looking at it from a little bit farther So you can have more of a sense of you in that situation and what you can choose differently in that situation. So I think that is is an awesome one to share too. I think those would be it like to end this conversation because there are so many. 
So if you want to know more, Betsy is an awesome certified facilitator. We have a lot in the world. And it's just amazing to have excess consciousness on Earth. I'm so, so grateful beyond words. I, I love it. And, you know, yes, you you did. What you spoke about are some of my ones as well. And even if you guys just, like, t- chose one and played with it, your whole entire life could change. And it's, they're just in such a gift. And, you know, so he, he rattled them off very quickly. And you, they do become really like second nature. And at first they can seem like, oh, my God, this is so weird or so different or I can't possibly do it. But if you're willing to actually play with it and explore, there are just so many different things. And for any situation, there's a lot of different things that you could choose. And so thank you so much for your enthusiasm and you know everything that you have shared. I just, I love it so much. And it really is inspiring for so many people to see the, the enthusiasm of the young leaders coming up that don't have a point of view that thinks can't change and you know because when I was boy oh boy I sure wish that I had had these possibilities when I was your age you know starting in college and doing the things and thinking that I had to follow this certain path and there really was no other way and then getting very frustrated with a lot of things that I was you know hitting my head up against and being told that I couldn't do anything different when I knew there was other possibilities. And so here you guys have, you've you've discovered these amazing possibilities and it's like, yeah, actually there are different things available. Here they are and being willing to talk about it and encourage everybody, no matter what their age are, but of course you're, you know, you're, with the young leaders and having these different possibilities and invitations open for for kids who might have just thought that their life was going one direction and now it's like hey wait a minute it doesn't have to be this way and so are there any stories that you can think of as i'm talking about this that you would like to share with listeners on how this may have impacted some of your you know, friends or fellow students or another story? Um, I would like to share how it has changed um, the way that I see the possibilities in university, like to explore mm-hmm. more of that because it's, it's, you can apply it to school and I think that this can be a contribution. So when I started Great. the college three years ago, and when I started, my story was very similar to yours, Betsy, in the sense of that I saw things the way they were, and I, I perceived that something was off, that I, something could be different, but I didn't have a way, I couldn't find a way to change it, you know? And mm-hmm. right now, having those tools, I, I can see things that are not functioning, and I can ask, okay, how can I change this? And what would it take to change it? And to truly be that space. So the story is like this. I was in the university in the last year, and I, I really had a sense that we needed to have more trees and that we needed to have more contact with nature. And we didn't have a lot of nature on the campus. So I just... I can't remember like how it all came to be, but it kind of happened that way. I was like, I, I kind of have had this communication with the universe already. So I was like, okay, um, I, I didn't even made the, the question. I didn't even ask the question per se, but I was being that question at that moment. I'm, I'm getting it now. <laughs> so I was like, universe, how can I, how can I introduce more more nature here, more trees here. And so one week later that I had this thought, um, some of, some girls, um, some senior year girls, they 
happen to be in the in our center the center that we meet when we're not having classes so like a community center i think that's mm-hmm. the word and and I, I had sent a message to the coordinator of the center to go like oh do we have somebody that's in charge of planting trees and handling stuff with like um, environmental stuff in the campus and she was like oh I think there are some girls but I don't know so it was like do you know like not 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 pretty much objective so what what came to be is that I was in this center the community center and this girl showed up and she went to me are you Enzo and I was like yeah I am <laughs> and she was like Oh, I'm, I'm, her name was Isabella. I'm Isabella, and I'm in the charge of the, the, I don't know how to say it in English, but it's the, it's a place where you plant, like, medicinal herbs and plants. It was like a, a orchard. Okay. Something like that. Yeah, and okay. she was like, oh, I'm in, I'm in charge of the orchard here. And I was wanted, I, I, I wanted to know if you wanted to join. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> how did this happen? <laughs> You know, and um, right now I'm really getting that I was being the space of question like universe. What would it take for it to show up like without even asking with words? But Mm -hmm. this is the power that we have asking questions and being the space of openness for the universe to give to us. So then I joined the, the project and we are like because of the pandemic, we didn't go through a lot of stuff, but we already have like social media and we are starting to plant mm-hmm. medicinal herbs and giving like seminars about plants and how you can use it for your health. And it's been like so cool. Like it, it's an example of mine uh, as how those tools work and how magical we can be if we are willing to ask for it. And if we're willing to trust that the universe is going to, li- it's going to deliver what we ask for. Wow. that I love that so much. And I wonder for all of us, You know, if we would be willing to trust the universe even uh, just a little bit more, that the universe actually does provide way more than maybe we've ever acknowledged. So thank you for that beautiful example of how you you can actually create change. All right, you guys, stay tuned for a second break, and we'll have more conversation after. Stay tuned. Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Om Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Om Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Om Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What is Going On? My passion is sifting through information, research, and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers, and researchers, pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics, and the universe. I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here, and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness, and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. So if you're the kind of forward-thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time every Thursday, and together we can discover what's really going on. Hey, hon, what you doing with your phone? Taking pictures? No, I'm asking you questions. Like what? Hey, Bobo, do flowers have best friends? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, follow me. I want to show you something. Look, flowers do have best friends. Whoa. Some answers can only be found in nature. Discover the unsearchable. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a trail near you. Brought to you by the United States Forest Service and the Ad Council.
I love even on that commercial, it's talking about asking questions. <laughs> that is one thing that we talk about all the time on this show. I am Betsy McLaughlin, and here today with Enzo, and we've just been having such a great conversation and about young leaders and how we can all contribute and change things that maybe we thought we really couldn't change. And Enzo, if somebody joined in late, I would love for you to t- say again, if there's people listening who can think of young people that they would love to tell about this, or they're a young person themselves, or they would like to contribute to the young leaders, would you please tell everyone again how they can find you and how they could contribute to everything you guys are creating? Sure, sure. And you can find us with ease on Instagram, and there we have a link tree to all of our social media. So our nickname or our login in Instagram is at underline young leaders as the actual words. So it's very easy to find us. Um, on Yeah, and in Instagram, you can find all the links to YouTube, Facebook, we had a call, a free call called Are You an A Werewolf a time ago? And Betsy was there. It was brilliant. I loved it. And you can find the recordings so there. Yeah, they were free. And you can find it there on the link tree on our Instagram to know more about us and to engage with what we have created. And also you can join us on Facebook. We have our page, which is Young Leaders Creating a Different Future. There you can find more information, too. And yeah, pretty much on our link tree on Instagram, it's everything that you need to know to engage with us, to contact us. And if you're young, if you know anyone young, like Betsy said, that's looking for a different possibility to live here, uh, please let them know about us. It would be a true gift to receive all of you guys and to really be the space that we desire to be for all the planet and for all the young and old and no matter what age people, all over, all over the globe mm-hmm. because like without you guys engaging with us we are a group but if all of us unite ourselves we can truly create something different on the planet and that's the brilliance of engaging with each other that's so true and it, you know if we all link our arms and say you know that there really are infinite possibilities and we can all if we all are would like to contribute to the change we would love to see in this world, it does start with each of us. And and so if somebody's listening who feels like, you know, they're alone in, let's say, you know, a, a small town somewhere or in the world, and they feel like they couldn't possibly make a difference, they're let's say 17 years old or 18 years old and nobody's listening to them and they feel like they couldn't possibly make a difference. What would you say to them right now? Oh, that's awesome. I would say, I I, I would ask them to look at nature truly to look at the flowers and the trees and to see the difference that each one of them is. Because for an example, I was talking to a friend today Flowers, stars, and like Christmas lights, they are all different, but they are all beautiful in their own way. So if you look at nature, you can see beauty and you can see brilliance everywhere in every detail. And we, as being part of nature, we are the same. So if you're in doubt of your value and of your brilliance and of your beauty, please just go to nature because nature won't judge you, nature will receive you, and you can look at all these different animals, insects, plants, and you can really see how everything is connected and how every, how, for an example, if uh, a bug didn't exist in a, in a tree, the tree wouldn't, wouldn't be as vibrant because it wouldn't have the the renewable source of its leaves because the bugs need to eat the leaves. And if there aren't flowers, the bugs cannot survive because they need to be fed. And so each part has a different role and a role that's like 
vital. So I would ask you to really look at nature and look how everything is vital and necessary for everything to function harmonically and to really perceive in your life where are you that vital space for everything to function harmonically and how you can be this space for yourself. Like how can you be this nurturing space for yourself? So if you look at nature, like for me, looking at nature is always something soothing and something that takes me out of this place of um, self-abuse, I would say, because we can really see that everything matters, that the stars in the sky matter, that each one of us has a role to play on Earth. And truly, if you weren't here, the Earth wouldn't be the same. And there's, uh, there's a, a quite interesting exercise that I love to do because I facilitate bars classes too, and when I facilitate, I usually do this exercise, which is all of you guys watching and listening to us now, perceive the energy of the globe, like of all the energy, all the people around us, really be present with it. You don't need to think, just, just kind of sense this energy. And now take your energy out of the equation, take your energy out of the earth. Like if you weren't born here, if you never came to the earth, how would the energy be? And sense the difference. When I first did it, I kind of sensed a hole, like it, as if something was missing. So I don't know how you guys perceive it. Maybe yeah. you can have some time alone with it without me talking. But really perceive how you affect the world and how you, how if you weren't here, the earth wouldn't be the same. Like, I wanted to ask a question for you guys now. If you weren't here, would the earth be as vibrant, as healthy as it is? If you perceive it, lightness is a yes. If you perceive heaviness, it's a no. So that's also a, a tool from Axis. And if you perceive a no, well, how much can you receive the gratefulness, like the gratitude from the earth that you're here? Because how much do you, listening to us, each one of us, how do us, how do we contribute to the earth staying healthy and staying vibrant and beautiful and exuberant as it truly is? Like how much we are the exuberance on earth and as the earth? Wow. I, I love that answer so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. And, you know, because you can get yourself so caught up in, you know, feeling like you're wrong and you just don't make a difference. And ask, running that exercise and in what a contribution that could be for anybody who may be in that, that place. And what a beautiful invitation for all of us to actually remind ourselves and to step outside of any perceived limitations that we think we might have. And that is such a beautiful invitation for all of us. Mm -hmm. And can I add something? Yes, please do. Um, one thing that I was wondering today is how much energy do you, do we use with some with some stuff that is not relevant at all for mm -hmm. our living for the earth for the future so one thing that i always started to ask myself is when i'm choosing something when i'm in the middle of one of those confused moments you know i kind of ask myself okay is this relevant for the future that i'm creating because if i get a no I stop and I say, okay, what else can I choose here? Because if you start putting energy on things that are not relevant, you're not creating your life, actually. You're creating, like, a, a limited version of what you could create as you're living in your future. So I think that's a, a, a cool tool that I would like to share with you guys. I love that. I love that so much. And so... <laughs> I wonder if you could ask for anything with the last month of 2020, what would it be? Ooh, that's awesome. I think I would ask for more awareness and more consciousness on the planet. Because for me, to have awareness and to have consciousness as a new reality on planet Earth it's truly the way that we're going to create difference, you know? 
because consciousness and awareness are the in my perspective the most dynamic ways that we can see what else is possible and what else is here that we haven't considered so whenever we choose consciousness which is the space where everybody and everything is included and nothing and nobody is judged so when you don't judge anything and you include everything and everybody you truly have all the choice possible in the universe so my request for 2000 the, the, this last month would be that we exponentialize consciousness on the planet and that we truly had the courage to be present with the areas of our life that we've been avoiding because this is something that i've been looking at my personal life which is i'm looking at stuff that i was postponing and avoiding for so much time so much time and now um i'm really okay now it's the time now it's the time to look at finances <laughs> and my financial reality and my relationships. So things that I, I wouldn't, I, I wasn't willing to look before. And I think that's the, the second ask for us to be present with everything that we are avoiding. Because to if we are present, we can change it. If we're not present, it's unchangeable. <laughs> that's the only way that we can limit ourselves in our capacity to change things. It's when we avoid stuff. So I would like to ask everybody that's listening to us now, like, what have you been avoiding that if you were present with it, it would change everything and it would like create a living and a life beyond what you thought was possible. And yeah, I, I would like to, to just leave this question percolating your universes. And that's one mm -hmm. question. And my, my, last, my last ask would be, for the, for us to live as the earth, you know, for us to be the generative energy that contributes to the thriving of the earth. Because what I'm perceiving more and more is that the earth is asking for... I love that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like all of a sudden, Enzo, you went quiet. You were talking can, about the can, earth. Can okay. you hear me now? Yes. Okay, so okay. say that again, please. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> so one thing that I would say is for us to be present with the earth and what the earth is requesting from us right now. So what generative energy we can be so that the earth can thrive truly. Because... It, like from all the documentaries and all the films, the movies I'm seeing about the future that, that we're creating, now mm -hmm. it's the time to change the way that we function with the earth and change our like mindset, our way of functioning to function as the earth and not with the earth only, you know? Mm. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I just watched, um, there's a Netflix show um, called My octopus teacher and mm -hmm. you know I, that was such a beautiful show and it's about a fellow in south africa who discovers a an octopus in a national kelp forest and the the story that unfolds with this octopus and what this beautiful creature teaches him and what i learned about octopus i mean i really did not know a lot and so just going into it and the photography is stunning and it just reminds you of the beauty and the gloriousness of our world so if you guys are looking for something to enjoy i highly recommend that and there's so many other beautiful documentaries on the earth, uh, you know, David Attenborough and, and plenty of others, the planet, planet Earth, and so many things that really can help you get a sense of the communion and how nature just all co-creates and all the animals create together. And as Enzo described a little bit earlier, it's, you know, it's just such a beautiful thing that we have chosen these these bodies that we're in and to be here on on the earth and what can we together all of us contribute and 
change and create now that has never been able to be created before. So yeah. as we round out the time together today, what else would you like to share with us? Um, I would like to share with you guys like my gratitude truly for you Betsy and for this show and for everybody that's Aww. listening to us because truly um most of the times when we when we live our lives um surrounded by people who are not grateful for us it's really mm -hmm. tough to to keep on going and to keep on creating and pursuing our dreams so please know that I'm grateful for you, even if I like don't know you in person. <laughs> but I'm truly grateful for you, and consciousness is truly grateful for you, and the earth is truly grateful for you. And if you're pursuing creations and dreams that nobody, nobody is by your side, like contributing to it, please know that you can ask the universe for more to show up. I think that's oh, it. I love that. Thank you so much, Enzo. And you guys can find them at Young Leaders, at underscore Young Leaders, at Instagram. And if you need to find them, you can always message me. I'll be happy to put you guys in touch. Thank you again for being with us today, Enzo. What a pleasure. Thank you, Betsy. Thank you, everybody. Bye, everyone. Thanks so much Bye. for listening. Take care.